I saw a wave, a dark wave, come over our nation. And it's not just the election, of course. But this program is going to be all in the name Rigged. Rigged. Because when I and we formed Rigged, it was because of the financial system. But Rigged is now becoming common in America. It's all rigged. In a rigged system, the rigged in our culture, the rigged in the system. Today we're going to discuss how to avoid and resist digital currency, uh, as well as the central bank digital currency that the government's going to try to implement and the digital money that they're going to try to create. Now, this is going to be in parallel with the digital ID. Um, this is definitely in works globally. It's not just the United States. Uh, it, they're going to give everyone a digital footprint. Uh, believe me, they're going to make up a great story as to why it's important. Um, but believe me, it is 100% to enslave you. And once we, if we allow a digital currency as well as digital ID, we will be slaves. So if you're okay with that, that's fine. But otherwise, today we're going to discuss a handful of ways that you can avoid being part of a digital currency system as well as a central bank digital money. And uh, this is more of a d defensive measure. I'm not sure we can actually stop it, although I would love to think that the American people will just wake up. But that's another conversation. From what I see in our nation and the way we're going and what we're trying to show the world is the moral compass. We're done. We're going down a very deep, dark an ugly hole that I'm not sure we get out. And I don't believe most Americans are like that, of course. I do think that, you know, those who control academia, a lot of local government, uh, state government, as well as national government, uh, media, they are, they're, they're lunatic in so many moral ways. I mean, they're antichrist. So, you know, it's, you can, it's obvious, like it's not a debate. I mean, you just go to England right now and over in England, uh, they've surveyed Gen Z kids and found that 53% identify as, as non-conforming, meaning they don't even know what they are, boy or girl. And if that's not the end of the world, I, I just don't know what else to say. But we are looking at a time where, uh, you know, I would say days of Noah. Now, for those not familiar with the Bible, maybe read up on that. It's This is probably the time we're in. Uh, this is Sodom and Gomorrah on steroids and days of no on steroids. But the digital money and the digital ID is really, really important because, like I said, it is the way they are going to enslave us. They are going to create all sorts of tyrannical, totalitarian control mechanisms with it. It will be programmable. It will allow the governments to track and control Every single penny that you earn, that you save, and that you spend. Think about that. I mean, honestly, in America, that has no place. But again, I can't even believe we're going down the road we're going. So nothing surprises me anymore. Um, to me, I will always just say, shut up and sit down. You're a lunatic. And I have no problem with that. I think there's many people that need to start doing it. I mean, look at the Gestapo. Look at the literal Nazi brown shirt Gestapo of what the FBI are doing to literally an 87-year-old lady who survived a concentration camp in World War II was doing nothing but singing biblical hymns. And they've arrested her because she was singing those hymns outside an abortion clinic where they were murdering babies. Are you serious? But I mean, that's Bolshevik stuff. That's what they do. So the point is, we are tolerating this. And folks, it's not just the left, because how many on the right do you hear saying anything about it? Right? So they're all taking us down the same rabbit hole and you better get ready. And that's why these digital currencies are so vital to understand because it's going to literally enslave us and we need to know how to get around them because they can control that. It's extremely powerful tool for the politicians to literally confiscate 
and this is Marxism, of course, but confiscate and redistribute wealth as they see fit. And then I've, I've known people in Sweden when I was in Germany in the army. I had a lot of friends in Sweden and they had an extremely high tax rate after a certain amount. And you know what they did? They just stopped working. They would earn up to a certain point. But once they hit that tax bracket, they would literally just not produce anything anymore. How productive of a nation does that sound like? Well, of course, just look at Sweden now and you'll understand. But that's what will happen when they get to that point where they can confiscate and redistribute. You will kill the entrepreneurial spirit. You will kill America as you know it. These central bank digital currencies will make it possible for central banks to impose deeply negative interest rates. We've talked a lot about that, and a lot of people don't quite understand what that means, but let me just sum it up for you. A negative interest rate basically is a euphemism for a tax on money that is saved. So if you have money in a savings account, they will actually take a portion of that money every month as a negative rate. I still, I don't know. I mean, to me, I still don't get why people trust the banks. I mean, I talked to a lady who has 400000 is sitting in a bank in her savings, and she has no clue about the definition of money. And I'm, I just, my heart just goes out to her because she is absolutely going to get smoked for the future. Uh, but it's a tax on your money. The banking system is not something we need. Now we do to pay certain bills. It's easier, yeah. I would keep a few months in there that you need and then cycle through. But for the most part, we don't need the bank unless we need a loan of some kind. But you know what? Do your best not to. Unless it's a home or an automobile, maybe. Otherwise, forget it. And, you know, there's other ways. There's other. We just don't have to have our savings there. Put it that way. These will make it completely possible now for these, these central banks to not only tax us for saving money, but they can program the digital currency to have an think about this. The Chinese have already talked about it. They want to program the money to have an expiration date. Think about that, like an airline frequent flyer mile. They will force you to spend your money or it will expire and go to zero. Before the end of the month, you better spend this or it will be worthless. Think about how tyrannical that is. And I personally think we need to be getting people in there, you know, for, for politics that will not su succumb to this. But when you see what they're doing uh, to, to the right side of the political spectrum right now, these Bolsheviks, and we're allowing it, even the Republicans are allowing it. Um, my guess is America is done forever, but I always have hope. I'd like to think so anyway. But this does enable devious social engineering. It allows the governments to literally punish and reward people in ways that they couldn't do before. And we give out welfare and and, you know, we got the, the cronyism. I mean, like you just saw Saudi Arabia come out. Now, of course, if Trump did something like this, you know, they would have impeached him. Um, it's called quid pro quo. And but they even got it where the Saudis came out and said that Biden asked them to please not uh, cut oil production until after the midterms. You're just not allowed to do that as a president. But yes, yeah, see, the left can do anything they want. It's OK if the right sneezes wrong, they throw them in jail. And I, I honestly, I hold the right responsible. I think they're the ones allowing it, to be honest. But think about the government's imposing lockdowns again for a flu. I mean, it was just a flu, by the way. Or climate change. Oh, my goodness. Forget that a volcano burps and puts more in there. Or forget we blow up pipelines and put methane into the air. Or whatever pretext they find convenient, they can do. This money can be programmed to only work in a geographic area, literally give you a radius of 20, 25 miles and say you go outside of that, your payment system will no longer work and it will be denied. Suppose the people in charge that uh, you want to encourage others to take a pharmaceutical product. If you don't get the jab, hmm. They could easily deposit money into the accounts of those who complied as they were trying to bribe people with pizza. So insane, Satanists. 
They could also deduct it from your account in the form of digital money control. There is no doubt that central bank digital currencies and the digital money digital ID system will be paired with a social credit system. And such a system is already in place in China. I've been trying to holler this for the longest time. It's already in China. They're already doing it. A third of our politicians at least are bought off by the Chinese, let alone Hollywood media. So I'm not exactly sure we're stopping this. Social credit is bad. And in the West, it's likely to come in a different flavor. It'll probably be paired with the ESG, the environmental score which is such a joke. Now, get it. I love the idea of saving the environment, but everything they're doing is totally irrational. When you get to the core, it's all about controlling you. Did you commit a thought crime on social media? Think about it. Perhaps you read too many politically incorrect articles online. Did you exceed your monthly meat consumption allowance? And then expect some financial punishment thanks to this uh, the digital currency. So without a doubt, these are an instrument of enslavement. They represent a quantum leap back in human freedom. And it's coming. Governments will probably mandate this as a solution when the next crisis hits, which I believe is right around the corner. And the good news is, I guess, if anything, it's going to fail because despite the hype, the digital currency is the same fiat currency scam, but on steroids digitally. How long does it take? How many generations before it fails? And I guess it depends on we the people. I can tell you right now, though, if we do not stop it from being implemented, we're, it, it will be done. By the time they do the Gen Zs and the other kids, they're just worthless. It's going to be like the zombies. It doesn't even matter anymore at that point. So... This is what is on the horizon, and I would take it serious. Here's a handful of points what I would probably look to do um, to, to get around it because you, you got about you know four or five here points that you can do to avoid the digital currency world. I'd take it serious. Point one, obviously, from my point of view, you use gold and silver physically. Avoid the digital currency means use alternate forms of money. People use other forms of money every day, but many do consider it what it actually is or what makes for good money. They don't quite understand. Most people, even today, I'm a shocked at the, what I hear. People just don't understand money. Think about this. It's like asking a fish, what is water? The fish probably doesn't even notice the water unless it becomes polluted or something is wrong. Money is good, just like any other in, a, in an economy. It isn't a complex notion to grasp. This isn't something like in deep, convoluted mathematical formulas or complex theories. This is money. Money is a chicken, a swap, a barter. I mean, but you have these, these people in academia and media and government, they mislead you all the time on what money is. It's pretty straightforward. It's an exchange of value over time. That's why my silver today buys me more gas than it did 50 years ago. And the dollar doesn't even buy you a quarter of a gallon. I mean, it's just insane about the concept of money. But if we get it, we can survive. Think of money as a claim on human time. It's like stored life or energy. But, you know, I think most people around the world, except maybe Africa and places like that, they're probably smarter than the Western world right now because most of humanity is thoughtlessly, they just accept whatever the government gives them as money. Money doesn't need to come from the government. That's a complete misnomer. But the average person has been completely shammed into believing that the money comes from government created by government. It's like if you go back in time and ask the average person in the Soviet Union, where do shoes come from? And this is where we're going with our mindset. They would say, well, the government makes the shoes. Where else could they come from? Who else could make the shoes, right? Because the government controls everything. 
it's the same mentality here right now today regarding money, except it's, it's more widespread. The truth is money doesn't even need to come from the government. Neither does the shoes. People have used stones and beads and cattle and, and chickens and seashells and gold and silver and commodities all through history as forms of money. And interestingly, over the last, well, 2,500 years at least, gold has been mankind's most enduring form of money because they know gold is something you can't create. It comes from the creation of a star. It was given to us by God. Hey, guy, two, eight. I prefer silver because gold's too expensive and it's going to be too expensive and you're not going to be able to transact easy. Point number two. Obtain financial sovereignty with digital, well, I would say Bitcoin or other forms of crypto. There's going, it's going to come back, folks. I know right now it doesn't, but they, they've been hammering it, you know, just as the whole financial system is corrupt. It's a lie. Just like the CPI index is what we call the CP lie. But digital, the central bank digital currency and Bitcoin, they do share very similar characteristics. They're both digital and they facilitate kind of like a fast payment of, you know, off of your phone. But that's it. The reality is the central bank and Bitcoin are completely different. In central banks, you need the government's per permission to do anything. Bitcoin is permissionless. Government will create as many currency units as they want, yet Bitcoin will never have more than 21 million units. That's what we used to be when we were on the gold standard. We held us to a budget. Vital. Central bank digital currencies are centralized. That's always dangerous. Greed, power, control, Satanism. Bitcoin is decentralized. Governments can censor transactions. They'll freeze. They'll confiscate your unit. Bitcoin is censorship resistant. And there's no laws that can affect the protocol. Well, they're trying anyway. So it's really important to know how to use and be prepared for some form, if not Bitcoin, some form of a cryptocurrency. I personally like Theta, Theta.org. Uh, ThetaNetwork.org. You can't buy it in the United States. There is ways to get it, but that is a phenomenal, unbelievable token that's going to be in the future. It's going to dominate how the internet rolls, but understanding it is important. And that is another one besides gold and silver you have to get a hold of. This is the one I keep saying a lot about. Number three is really get organized locally. Now, that's going to do me just fine where I live in the Northwest. Um, we don't really have government around us. And if they do come in, they better come in hot and heavy because we are loaded to bear up here. And uh, I'm just very fortunate and, and honored to, to be a part of this society. And uh, I'm not too concerned. But the, we are organized locally. Because if you know the people in your community, now, no, this is hard in, in a lot of areas. I get it. In the big suburban areas but you know take it one block at a time and get to know who does what if you want to avoid digital currency many of the conveniences of society are going to be unavailable that you have to prepare for that's why personally me buy everything that you think you're going to want for some time be stored up if you can i know the storage is the hard part but that would be the way to go you probably will be unable to shop at Walmart or large stores of any kind. They will all be tied right into the digital currency. You're going to have to be more self-sufficient. And I know this is where it gets too hard for most people. But hey, if you want to get outside the system of being a slave, fine. I think a lot of people will just accept being a slave, which astounds me. But if we become more self-sufficient and rely on our community to get what we need. There'll be people who make clothes. There'll be people who provide food. There'll be just like, you know, if you really want to know what it'll be like or how it could be, just watch Little House on the Prairie. You have somebody who provides grain, somebody who's a mercantile, someone who can, can deal with ironworks. I mean, everybody has kind of a trade and they work with one another on that. Who does it right now? Extremely successful. The Amish. 
Amish are incredible at this self-sufficiency. I mean, I'm not saying let's all go be Amish to avoid digital currency, but I don't know. To me, that sounds like a great idea right now. But we can learn from their societies. We can work outside this traditional system we're at. We can emulate areas that make sense in our community. Now, I know for those in the city, you're done. Um, you can't really do this, but I still contend you can. Just like in the areas like Hell's Kitchen in New York. There are certain blocks that are controlled and managed by certain people, and it's just the way it is. If you get into the community, find out who has talents and start forming organized meetings or groups once a month. I've heard so many wonderful people talk about this, and it's a very difficult thing to do. I think they may be forced to do it later, um, but if you start to head now, uh, you're going to be very blessed for doing so. And learn how to exchange value for value. That would be, I think, my fourth point. Literally, value for value. Know what things are. See, digital currencies and governments will, you know, they'll perverted money. They'll use technology to do the exchange in the way they will enslave us. Digital currencies, uh, well, basically, bartering doesn't exist. And bartering doesn't even look anything like the digital world. Not even close. Key is would be to understand what the value is. What can you provide to other people? I know people who make clothes, literally. And then there's people who work well with iron. There's people who work with the, I mean, so if you really, I mean, I know it's a lost trait for a lot. I mean, you can stick a tool in a young man's hand these days. They have no idea how to use it. Um, but that's part of the attrition. Those will be those who die off. There are those who provide medical. There are those who provide all sorts of different services. You work together. And I personally think the very last point here I'd like to make is become a prepper. I know a lot of people like to tease those types, but they're the ones who are going to have it. And good luck getting near them. They will shoot you if you try to steal from them. Period. But minimize the inconvenience of bartering. It's ideal to be self-sufficient in many areas as possible. And I know a lot of people can. That's why those who can need to be able to help those who can't, especially the elderly. We need to work together as people. Stockpile supplies. Gain survival knowledge and skills, or if anything, buy the book. I have a handful. I have a library of books. I'm prepared for censorship. I'm prepared for the Nazi book burning, and they won't allow us to read anything except a government edict. And they call me extreme. Fine. I have books on everything from the old world up on how to do, how to build. I'll say the one thing I don't have, which I'm going to start doing, is I'm going to start collecting antique tools. Because I think we'll need them. Now, do I want to go here, folks? No. But I'm not taking the mark of the beast. I'm not living in that world, period. Now, I know many will. Many say, no, they won't now. But they will because they'll starve and they'll have no choice. I'm personally saying, let's stop it now before it happens. But if they don't, this is what you need to do. And if you're too elderly to do it, you can do something. But get together with families and communities. And if it's a church thing, start having the conversation. How derelict are our churches? Man, they're sitting there talking about La La Land stuff when it comes to the Bible. Instead of helping prepare the people for what's really coming. It's insane. Like nobody seems to have their act together these days. And you think you're going to get help? I don't care if you're a church or not. If you're not doing the right thing, you're on your own. Just because you say you're a Christian doesn't mean you're behaving like one. And yes, love is there and I get all that stuff. But boy, you better get your people ready if you're a pastor. So in conclusion to this, central bank digital currencies and the digital ID, if they get away with it, are going to be so horrific. And it's coming. I would be telling people, even if they say you're crazy, if they're that left wing, ignore them. They're already done. I write them off. I have so many family members I will never talk to again. They're just so brainwashed. You could show them a box and they will think it's a ball. 
I mean, seriously, they're brainwashed. I mean, no, it's got four corners here. It's square. It can open up. No, it's a ball. It bounces. No, it doesn't. But see, that's what people are. Over the last couple of years, we've seen that, right? I still see people walking around with masks on their face and they think they're helping themselves. So to summarize, let alone a fart goes through that mask so quick, you don't think a virus does? Come on, man. We got to wake up, people, and help one another, though. It's not just about you understanding it. It's about having the courage to help others understand it, too. And for those that don't want to listen, ignore them. Move on. First, own physical gold and silver. Next, obtain sovereignty with digital, like not digital, excuse me. Oh my gosh, smack me for that. But get to know crypto, Bitcoin, get to understand that. They're going to try to shut things down with it, but they will never be able to. Well, they're going to try, but believe me, it'll still be around. Get organized locally. Exchange and learn, understand what value is and learn how to do value for value and become a prepper. The trajectory here is absolutely troubling. And there's very little any individual can really do to change the course of these trends. I think if we come together by the hundreds of thousands and don't leave the streets, um, but, you know, look what they're doing to 80, 90 year olds right now who are just singing hymns outside abortion clinics. They're arresting them. If you want to talk about Bolshevik, maybe you should do your homework if you don't know what I mean by that. Maybe place to get started is study up on the Bolsheviks. That's what this country is right now. And for any of those on the left, you're a Bolshevik, whether you know it or not. And if you don't want to be, then you're, you need to become a Republican. Unfortunately, we have two tiers. I'd like to have five different choices in this country, but we have one or the other. And to me, there's one that's lesser evil than the other one. That's for sure. If we get to know some of this stuff, we can avoid digital currencies and central bank digital currencies, digital IDs, if we just say no. So until next time, God bless each and every one of you. With all of the recent changes in the political and financial markets, there has never been a better time than right now to invest in silver and gold. When governments simply print billions of dollars in paper money in hopes of solving financial shortfalls, you know that it is time to buy and hold assets of true and lasting value. Free information is available to you right now by calling 888-747-3309. Whether you are a new investor or you're interested in preserving the value of your retirement accounts, we make it easy for you to make smart decisions for your financial future. The specialists at Cornerstone are here to serve you, work to satisfy your retirement goals, and communicate with respect. Call us right now at 888-747-3309. That's 888-747-3309. Or visit us online at cornerstoneassetmetals.com. That's cornerstoneassetmetals.com.